like take their business, take their life, take whatever goals they have to the next level. Um, so that's kind of what I want to talk about. The wealth tried in this presentation, if you guys are able to master this, it doesn't matter what industry you are in, you're going to be able to get the business that you want. You're going to be able to break any income plateau. And on top of that, you're going to not only just, you know, build an audience that actually begs for your services and your products, but you guys are also going to just create this new level of freedom in your life. I'm talking not just about business, but health, fitness, emotional, financial. So in the words of like Jim Rohn, before I actually begin, if you guys are ready, can I get i uh, I'm ready? I'm ready. Okay, awesome. I like you guys ready. All right, guys, so before I actually go in with the Wealth Tried, where you guys are going to learn actually how to, you know, break your income goals, before you're going to learn how to actually build the audience that's going to beg for your products, services, offers, or ideas, or actually talking about the freedom that, you know, all of us kind of like deep down want inside, right? You guys are here at this event. You guys invested in you guys yourselves. There's something inside of you in terms of like a business or like the idea that you want. You want to create freedom. You know, if it's for yourself, for your family, for the people that you care about, there's some aspect in your life that, you know, it, it's just inside you. It's almost like a purpose. It's almost like a goal. And it, it's kind of like your main purpose to uh, the reason why you're on this earth, right? Um, and that's kind of like what happened. I mean, there was like a giant fancy slide on talking about how cool I am. So for those who don't know who I am, before I actually go in with the Wealth Tried, so you're not just some random Asian guy like on stage like yelling at you guys. Uh, my name is Mike Vestile. I'm an author, I'm an entrepreneur, I'm also a business automation expert. You know, I have this skill set to find businesses and marketing and sales and seeing kind of like where they are lacking, right? And to kind of like take that and, you know, the owner's head out of their own business so they could actually see it on a 40,000 foot overview so they could actually, you know, scale to the next level. You know, I went from zero to 1.5 million in 12 months when I started one of like my initial successful companies. And um, on top of that, you know, one of the biggest things that I'm most known for is like literally random person background. I'm going to tell you my background in a bit, but I built an audience of 100,000 people in 12 months. And like I said, I'm not saying this to brag or to impress you guys or like to tell you guys how cool I am. It's just really impressed upon you that, you know, it didn't always start off like that. You know, like I remember when I started off in entrepreneurship when I was like 18 years old and I had this dream, this goal for that freedom, you know, travel around the world to help my mom, to help my dad. And I remember there were so many times I felt like I was going crazy, building my business, building my dream. Anyone here has ever relate, feel like they're going crazy, right? Like there was so many times that I had to bail on nights out with friends or to not really commit to family events and to actually always like say, you know, mom, dad, I can't hang out or friends, I can't out because I was focusing on this dream. And at first I thought I was going crazy because I was like, why does it seem like, you know, this vision that I wanted is so real in my brain, but everything around me, everyone around me just thought I was crazy. But it was, it was, it was insane. It, it was like kind of like a lot of you guys are here, man. You, you guys had that vision. You guys had something inside of you that you knew that what you were going right now is not yet enough, right? And that's kind of like the entire time. Like ever since I was 18 years old, I was, I was always doing businesses. I remember, you know, I would like save up $1,000. I would start a business and then I was just like fail. And I was like, okay, I'm going to go work. I remember I was like flipping signs uh, for GNC to like kind of get people traffic and conversions. So like get some protein, right? And, you know, I was like, I would, I would make money there. And then I would just then throw it into a business, get really excited, tell all my friends about it. And then I'd fail every single time. But I didn't care because I knew the life that I wanted was way more than any little piece of pain that I was currently going through. And I mean, it just kept on going, man. Like idea, tell all my friends. Uh, then I would just like fail and get like ridiculed and made fun of it. And, and I just kept on going and kept on going. Um, and it even got to a point where like, as I was getting older, you know, my mom and dad, they were like, all right, you, you can't really just, you know, do this for the rest of your life. You have to do something, right? And as a Filipino parent, they said, okay, like, Mike, you have options. This is going to be good. You could either be a doctor, a dentist, a nurse, or we're just going to have to disown you, Mike. <laughs> and I'm like, uh, mom. <laughs> uh, so because of that, you know, I, was, I realized, I was like, maybe I'm just going to become a dentist. That was kind of like the thing. My mom is a nurse. My dad was an engineer. And I thought, okay, well, 
they work 16 hour days. They look so unhappy. And in my mind, I was thinking, okay, well, if I just get a job that would make more than what they currently have, then maybe in my brain, like I just thought that maybe that would give me the freedom to actually help them out. Um, so long story short, what happened was that was what initially got me into dentistry. I like started like making money as a dental assistant, just throwing money in a bunch of different projects. Um, but still, so many things failed, so many things failed, so many things failed until one actually hit. And I remember when it actually hit me, right? I was at a Tony Robbins event, for those that are familiar with the story. And um, one of the like, investments that I made on my mom's credit card when I didn't have the money was, I was like, I'm just gonna bring them to a Tony Robbins event. Um, and it, it, was, it was amazing because I remember there was like 5,000 people in a room. My mom and dad thought I was like some part of cult right? Because like you go in, they show up late, everyone's like screaming and like moving their hands up and they're like screaming Tony's name and my mom and dad were like, what did I just like sign up for? Um, I was like, mom, mom, dad, just wait, just wait, just like sit down, it's gonna be good. <laughs> and I remember though, one of the craziest exercises that he did and um, it was probably some crazy like NLP marketing thing because he's been doing it for like years but I remember when he had everyone close his eyes and he dimmed down the lights and he had the crazy like purple like galaxy looking like crazy graphics in the back. And he had everyone visualize what it would be like on the last day of your life. You know, imagine being in the room, looking around, looking at your parents, looking at your loved ones, every single person around you on the last day that you have on this earth. And then he said, okay, I want you to also imagine all of the dreams, all of the goals, all of the things that you could have accomplished had you have not been so afraid to actually take that chance. And the reason why I ask you guys a question, you know, how many guys are business owners, coaches, consultants, service providers, you have an idea, maybe you wanna start events, maybe you wanna, you know, help serve something inside of you to better, like, solve mankind's biggest problems. You know, it stems with that conversation with yourself on overcoming a limiting belief overcoming some type of fear, either judgment from your friends or your family or your loved ones and understanding that the idea in your brain is actually worth going through all of the crap that you guys have been going through or haven't yet gone through. And I remember when Tony was like, okay, I want you to make the noise of what it would be like on that last day, your last breath, all of those dreams, all of those goals, all of those aspirations in, the, in that exact same room with your parents, they died with you. And I remember there was like 8,000 screams, man. I think I was like 21 at the time. And it just shattered my soul, man. It, it's one thing to like fear failure or to have fear of regret when you're 21. But when you see like a grown ass man and woman, 50, 60, 70 years old, and they literally do this exercise because they only know that they have like 10, 20, 30 years to live, 8,000 screams, that instilled to me this new level of urgency to actually accomplish my goals now instead of later. And I took that emotional anchoring of like that deep-seated pain and, and looking at my, the, my parents in struggling working 16 hours a day as a nurse, as an engineer, and I was like, okay, like I have this much time on this earth, they have this much time on this earth, I literally have to go through as many failures, as many rejections, as many bad things to actually not only get the lifestyle and the freedom that I want, but to actually you know, help my family, help my friends, help my fellow human beings, make the world a better place, leave something better than what you found it. And that's kind of like what I was trying to show in this like fancy slide that didn't work, so you guys get to just like look at this super minimalistic like uh, thing <laughs> that I just threw up literally 30 minutes ago before I got on my moped over here. <laughs> um, but ultimately, you know, before you actually see how that happens, how, how this like random kid built a company from zero to 1.5 million in 12 months, I also want you to understand that even though, you know, that happened really fast. I mean, I remember that year and it moved so much faster than I expected. But when you guys are starting your businesses, when you guys are starting your companies, when you guys are starting your projects, you guys gotta understand that you can't compare your insides with other people's outsides. How many of you guys actually see someone in your space and you're like, man, they have, they have it so good. And you're like, I hate myself. Anyone can relate? Yeah, it freaking sucks, man. And especially on Instagram, you're scrolling, you're like, man, like, 
that that person has a good business. That person's struggling the world. That girl has a big butt. Like, oh my God. Like, when, when am I going to actually, you know, get to my goal, right? And we well, guys got to understand, you know, before you see any of the speakers speak or before you hear any one of my successes, you got to understand that for the trees and the fruits of the tree to be like so amazing and so fruitful, it's because the roots had to be like twice as deep. And all the success that you see inside of people is because they've just been through more crap than you guys have been, you know? And this kind of brings me to the first step in the wealth tribe, which is deconstructing and redefining your blueprint. Now, I was 18 years old when I got started in entrepreneurship, right? And my entire life, my mom and dad, they, they loved me so much, but they came from a family where, you know, they lost a lot of money in entrepreneurship back in the Philippines when they immigrated here. And they had this, like, sole idea in their brain where, like, you know what, this job thing, this is the only way to create stability. And I remember ever since I was young, you know, they were instilling these beliefs inside of me. And it wasn't even their fault. It's just because, like, that's how they were trained. You know, they, 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 like, we all know this. Money is the root of all. Money doesn't grow on. Uh, you work really, really hard for 16 years until you die. You, you see how messed up that is? You work it like people said retire, but most people say like till you die. So it's like my parents have been talking to you guys too, I bet. <laughs> but that's the craziest thing, right? Like us as humans, ever since we were younger, we adopted limiting beliefs that weren't our own. And we adopted it as if they were our own truths. And I remember it took... You know, one of my initial mentors, his name was Zach, and I, I'm so grateful he came to my life when I was 18 years old, to see potential inside of me before I could actually see it in myself. And I remember I was like 18, I was like in college, I was still focusing on becoming a dentist, and I remember he came in, and I, I was kind of like hesitant to, to learning from him, because number one, he had like bigger biceps than me, and number two, he had like a cooler life than me. So initially I was like, ego, I was like, no, I can't learn from this guy. And that's kind of like when I first learned the first thing on what it actually means to get the lifestyle that I wanted. And I had to accept two different things. And before you guys could actually create the life that you want, build the goals that you have inside of you, you have to also ask yourself these two things as well, which is what I initially learned. And it's part of the first uh, pillar in the Wealth Tried is what is your willingness to learn and what is your willingness to accept change? I remember when Zach, you know, he had the lifestyle that I wanted. At the time, he was making like seven grand a month. He was like driving an E-Class Mercedes. And I was just like this broke, busted, disgusted 18-year-old that just wanted to help my family out and do whatever it took to actually make some money online, right? And I remember he asked me, he was like, well, Mike, what is your willingness to learn? And I thought I had the ability to learn, but for the only reason for me to actually understand that is I had to be willing to invest in myself. You know, a lot of you guys are entrepreneurs out here. How many times do you want to help your friends and you either gave them a link to a course or maybe you create your own course and you tried helping them out or you just gave them free advice, but they didn't never actually take action. You guys can relate? Yes? Yes or yes? Yes. 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 Thank you for the confidence. Um, and that's the biggest thing. The first thing that I had to realize is I had to invest in myself. And I can tell you guys are already the smart entrepreneurs because you guys invested in yourself to come here. All the way over here, I mean, 16 hour flights for some people, I mean, and it's like very hard and your neck sometimes, like if you're not like in business class, you know, sometimes it's like, and you, 30, hours. 30 hours, okay, yeah. <laughs> and it's tough, right? But you guys are willing to invest in yourself and that's why you guys are gonna create those breakthroughs this week. But I wasn't willing to learn, you know, my entire life, my parents were like, you could only be this. And because of that, I didn't think there was this whole other opportunity out there. Um, so you guys understand, like, for you to actually accomplish your goals, ask yourself an honest question. How much are you actually willing to learn a new skill, learn a new mindset, learn a new skill set to actually create that asset to get you to the next level? The second thing he taught me back when I was a wee little lad was what was my willingness to accept change? And I was like, okay, I have the willingness to learn, Zach. You're making some grand a month. Like, I want this too. Like, can you help me out as well? And he's like, well, what's your willingness to accept change? I was like, oh, I'm willing to accept any change, whatever it takes to like live my dream. And he's like, well, what's the favorite thing that you have in the world? And I was like, oh, it's like going out and partying with my friends. And they're like, well, are you willing to give that up? And I was like, no. And he's like, well, then you don't have a willingness to accept change. So for you to get to that result that you want, 
you have to find that favorite thing in your life that's not getting you towards your goals and you gotta ask yourself, just for a limited time, right? Are you willing to actually give that up? And it was a lot of conversation that I had with my younger self that I, I wasn't ready for, but it was, you could tell the quality of a man or woman's life based on how difficult the questions are willing to ask themselves earlier on. And I'm just so grateful that I had that experience with Zach earlier on. The second thing he taught me that kind of like deconstructed my blueprint and gave me a new download of the person that I needed to be uh, was an idea that he kind of coined was the law of correct perception. Now, how many of you guys here are familiar with the law of attraction? How many of you guys here confuse it with like the law of laziness? Or know people that <laughs> confuse it as a law of laziness? So many people think that you could just think positive and then bam, like your life happens, right? <laughs> it doesn't happen like that, right? On a more, yeah, it's crazy, I'm sorry. I hate to, and the tooth fairy is not real either. Um, and the crazy thing that I learned is, you know, us and this thing called the reticular activation system in your brain, what happens is there's opportunities that exist everywhere, right? Everywhere around us. But because our brains are so magnificent and so powerful is we cannot process everything at the exact same time. We can only focus on like a specific, like maybe 1% of all the details that are going on. And the best way that I could kind of like think about this, right, is like, uh, especially for guys, how many of you guys first saw like your dream car, right? Like it could have been either like a BMW or a Mercedes and you were maybe like 16 years old. And once you actually understood what your dream car was, you started seeing it everywhere, right? Those cars were always there, it's just now that you were actually aware of it. And it's the exact same thing with goals in our life, right? Our, our life and our personality operates kind of like the thermostat in this room. And if it gets too hot, you know, the fans would just like cool the room and then the temperature would go down, right? But if it got too cold, it would reset and then bring it back up, right? It's homeostasis. It's, and us as humans, because we're not willing to accept the change, we always tend to get back to where we've been, right? Notice, like, for example, if you have this uh, thing in your mind where you believe you could only own this much amount of income in your bank account. Notice how you always see, no matter how much money you make, even if you do, like, crazy launches, the amount of money in your checkings account just stays the same, you know? For some, it could be like 5,000, 50,000, 500,000, but it doesn't even matter, right? It'll move up and it'll move down because that is kind of the thermostat that you allow yourself. And at 18 years old, you know, I realized that like, I didn't have the proper thermostat. Mine was like down here, so I had to like ratchet it up all the way to where I actually wanted to be. And that's kind of when he told me, he's like, okay, Mike, I want you then to like describe the ultimate life that you want into specific detail, and I was like, okay, I was like writing it down. I was, I was like, I, I was 18 years old, I was super shy, I was super nervous, but I remember writing this down, I was like, I wanna travel the world, I wanna like talk on stage, I wanna like have like 30 girlfriends or something crazy like that. Um, and uh, I was just writing this down, like one after another after another, and um, I was like, okay, Zach, this is my wish list, this is the exact life that I want. And Zach looked up to me and he was like, okay, now, who is the person you need to become to deserve the life that you want. Because the problem with most people is they chase success, but no one understands that they have to become the person that is attracted to success. And that's what you guys gonna understand with your personal reality. For you to change your personal reality, you have to first change your personality. And that's what I didn't understand. I wanted these new things, but I wasn't willing to change the one thing, right? I wanted the change in my business, in my life, in my relationships, but the one thing that I didn't change was the change in myself, the person that I saw every single morning. So I wrote it down. I wrote it down exactly the person I needed to become. And the craziest thing is I read it out every single day. It's super weird. It sounds super cliche. I know you guys maybe want some like marketing and sales techniques, but this was the one single concept that ingrained to me a new personality that started changing and shifting the personal reality around me. And that was like my North Star, you know? I was like, okay, this is the person I have to be. And I remember every single day I would read it and like my friends thought I was crazy, my mom thought I was crazy. I was like, what is this like little thing? Mike's writing in his diary and he's like reading things. But the most important thing with the things that you want in this description of who you want to be and who you already are, right, is understanding that when you write it down, you have to write it down in the present tense. Okay, because that was my biggest problem. I was like, I want this, I want to be confident, I want this. A year happens, guess what? I technically accomplished my goal of still wanting it. I never embodied it. I never was it, 
right? So that was a little shift that I made. And once I actually was willing to change, you know, my DNA and my brain of exactly how to think, that's when the results started kind of changing itself. And that zero to 1.5 million happened so fast because of the years of building the roots inside. Which leads me to the second part of the wealth triad, and that is known as the nightmare fantasy matrix. So now that my mindset was kind of like, and I like took the red pill in the matrix and you know, I started seeing opportunities elsewhere. One of the biggest things that I realized is like, okay, like I can't just, you know, think and then have things come to me. I have to actually, you know, create a business. I have to solve a problem. And the problem when I was like getting started, when I was getting all these businesses is I thought I could just like sell anything to everyone anytime, which, you know, now like I've gotten better at it um, and selling like anything to anyone, but it's like got more niche. Uh, but the problem is like, I just thought I could take like one single thing and sell it to everybody. And that was my biggest mistake because what you guys are gonna understand with most businesses is all businesses is a transaction where your clients, the people that you're serving, even if it's not a business and you're, you want to like do events or if you want to, um, do like charity work or stuff, something like that. The reason why people will leave and part ways with the money in their pocket is because they want the solution that you provide more than they want the money in their pocket. And if you could kind of find the pain point in their life more than anything else and create the solution for that, you could literally create a business overnight. You know, and, and I'm going to do an example of like a dentist, right? Because I was going to be a dentist. Uh, so imagine, you know, you guys get like one single toothache while you guys are here out in Bali, right? And this one tooth hurts so bad, like so bad you couldn't sleep anymore, you know, like because of it, like you couldn't even brush your teeth, so your breath started smelling, so you know, you couldn't even really network here. And um, because of that, you know, you, you go back home and it's still hurting you and you can't even think, you can't sleep, you haven't slept for three weeks because it's one toothache. And because of that, you know, your girlfriend, or your wife, or your boyfriend won't kiss you anymore and she kicks you out and he kicks you out because it just smells so bad. And you're like, okay, well, this hurts a lot. So you, you go back to work, you know, you start making some money on your uh, wages so you could put that all in in your profits. But, you know, you can't focus because you haven't slept. The pain is like ridiculous. And, you know, you then ended up getting fired, right? A lot of pain points for just like one little pain, right? Now imagine if you're like, okay, now, you know, I'm in such deep pain, it's time to actually go to the dentist today. So you go to the dentist, you sit on the couch or the chair, and while he's like having all of like his tools inside, you know, he starts asking you questions because you know, how many times, how many amazing conversations you had with a dentist when they just have stuff in your mouth and they're like, oh, how's your day? Right? Can you imagine if all you cared about was getting that pain point solved in your tooth? How ridiculous it would be if your dentist was like, well, do you want teeth cleaning? Or how about like braces or retainer? And he actually didn't solve that one problem that you actually cared about, right? That one deep seated pain point. And finally, after asking all these questions of trying to sell you everything else that's not resonating with your current pain point, what if he's like, okay, well, I could either solve that problem for you right now for like five grand, or, you know, I could solve it for like a hundred bucks, but like, it's going to take me like 12 months. Like, which one would you pick if that toothache, like broke your relationship, like lost your job, your breath smells bad, no one to speak to you. Like, which option would you take? The first or the second? Exactly. And the problem with most people when they get in their business is they want to sell everything. They want to create so many variations of their products or services, and they want to get it to as many hands as possible when they're not first identifying the single pain point in the person's life that they could actually solve with their product offer or their service. And once you guys understand that, your sales get into place, your marketing get into place, and you know, the business that you didn't understand how to actually scale starts becoming simple, right? Which leads me to the third thing, right, which is, what is known as finding your North Star. So as you guys are going through this entire process of building your business, scaling, you know, acquiring new clients, you guys gotta ask yourself and always remember what your North Star is. What is the reason why you're actually doing the things that you are doing on a daily basis? You know, and I remember I had a meeting, right, with a guy worth $500 million. And, you know, I learned so much things from this meeting, okay, a lot of it was, finding my North Star, because the thing about business, right, is we think that when we build the business, get some clients on board, have the money that we want, then we could finally be happy. 
But for me, I had more money in my bank account than I never do, knew what to do with, but I found out that I never felt fulfilled and I just felt empty inside. And I was wondering why. Why do I feel like there's this emptiness inside? And this kind of like stemmed with what I learned with this guy that was worth 500 million. He was like, Mike, you gotta ask yourself, what is like that epic vision of where you wanna be 20 years down the future? Who are the people that you wanna hang out with? What, are the, what is the life that you wanna live? What are the relationships that you want to be like, to have? And you gotta like remember what is that thing that's moving you, that North Star, so that whenever like insecurity, sadness, or failure is happening, you know, you could always keep on going to the next level. For me, even though I did it when I was 18, I forgot that simple concept. And the second thing, when I understood that ultimate vision, I needed to, number one, like audit my current life and my current business and ask myself, is this what I was meant to do on this earth? And to audit and to see like if I should do something else. And that's kind of like when I understood that number one, I had to continually invest in myself, right? I remember like to talk to this guy, I invested like $6,000 to go all the way to this event. It was like private, I had to apply to get in, I had to like go and meet him, but it was just so beneficial when I had this conversation because I learned so much. And the second thing that I learned from that was, you know, find the one thing that you're good at and start creating a list of all the things that you suck at. You know, as us as entrepreneurs, our amazing thing is we're, we're really talented. Like we could figure out basically anything. And because of that, the problem with that is we start getting good at everything when we should get really good at only one thing, your zone of genius, and outsourcing everything else. So that's what I started doing, because before I was like, oh, I'm really good at this, 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 I don't need anybody else. But I defined the one thing that I was good at, and I just started you know, partnering with people whose skill sets and zone of genius complemented my inadequacies. So whatever vision that you have inside you, business you wanna create, understand that you gotta stop asking yourself, what do I need to know? You guys gotta ask yourself, who do I need to know to get to the next level? And with that being said, I just wanna kind of like instill in you kind of like the sense of urgency and sense of purpose before I like finish this up, is really crafting what that ultimate vision of where you wanna be down the road. Because the problem with most people is 10, 20 years are gonna happen. The question is, where will you be? So when you have that North Star of that great vision of what you actually wanted to create and the life that you want, the relationships that you want to have, don't be afraid to dream as big as possible because instead of you asking yourself if you're worthy enough of your goals, ask yourself if your goals are worthy enough of you. Thank you.